Hi, we're here on the uh, beach of Matachen with John Ole Olson, a writer and a flyer of ultralight aircraft. Morning, John. Buenos dias, Jorge. We're there. Mm How'd -hmm. you start doing this stuff? Well, uh, I was an alpine skier and a uh, big mountain skier, and uh, so I was accustomed to jumping off cliffs on skis when I um, when I first saw someone jump off a cliff with a hang glider and, and much to my astonishment go up and turn into a little dot in the sky and then disappear and uh, that was an astonishing moment in my life and that was when I knew I had to do the same thing and that was uh, 29 years ago and uh, I still find it as thrilling today as, as that very first day and uh, did you fly that day? No, no, I didn't. It was probably a week or so before I flew, but I chased that feller down, bought his hang glider off him, and um, uh, uh, started uh, at a little sand dune uh, about a week or so later and worked my way up to big mountains. And That's kind of how you learn, a little bit at a time. Steve. Did you have to have a pilot license to fly one of those things? No, no, and you still don't if you're interested in flying a single-seater. If you're flying a single-seat, Ultralight aircraft. There's no license required. That, that what you were you started with just a glider. A hang, a hang glider, glider. Yes. There was no license and, and uh, none of that. In fact, when did you reason. when did you start uh, uh, getting interested in powered gliders? Well, shortly thereafter, uh, we got a powered hang glider called a trike, which is uh, what I still fly today, both hang gliders and trikes. And uh, I we had a trike, uh, but. I was, I was frankly, I was kind of scared of it. It was a kind of a marginal machine, and um, so I went back to hang gliding for a dozen years or so, and then only around 1990 did I get another look at a trike, and they had come a long ways, and uh, so I still, you know, I'm, I'm still pleased about trikes. Um, where did you actually learn to fly? Where, where well, um, I was in the Reno, San Francisco area. And I learned to fly at places like Port Cronkite and Dillon Beach and uh, Zulu Ridge and uh, Slide Mountain. And uh, back in those days, there was no shortage of fabulous places to fly. Uh, and uh, subsequently, things have gotten built up a little bit, and we've lost launches and we've lost landing areas. Nowadays, there are a few places to fly, but back in those days, it seemed like everyone was hucking themselves off everywhere, you know. And the... Uh do you need a license to fly one of those uh, powered gliders? You do if it's two places. It's a new thing. It's called Sport Pilot, and it's a new program from the FAA. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to fly a two-place machine, it doesn't matter what, what it looks like. If it hauls two people, there's a license required. How many miles per gallon do you get? I mean, how, uh, with a, how much gasoline keeps you up in the air for how long? Well, uh, it depends. There's so many variables there. I mean... Um, you know, you could have a, uh, a big, uh, a heavy trike with a little bitty wing. It goes very fast, but it burns more fuel. Or you could have a very big uh, trike with a light load and a little bit of fuel, and it'll just sip the fuel, but it goes very slow. Uh, the other thing is that if you learn to use the natural currents that are available to keep you up in the sky, and in fact to lift you to tremendous altitudes, you may fly for hours on a quarter gas. Uh, because the engine is awesome. You like sharing your stories, and uh, you've written some books uh, about uh, about your career as a flyer. Yes, indeed. How many books have you written? Well, uh, I've written two, uh, and uh, I have uh, I have plans for two more. And uh, do they? What do they tell about? Well, they're just uh, basically. Uh, uh, Stories uh, about traveling, mostly in Mexico and Guatemala, and flying trikes and hang gliders. Uh, so I, I think you could say they're about traveling and flying. If a person wanted to buy one of these books, where would they go to buy one? Well, they can go to Amazon.com. If you go to Amazon.com and do a search for my name, John Q, as in Quinn Olson, O L S O N, uh, you'll come up with my books. If you put John Q. Olson in quotes in that little search box, Amazon.com, you'll come up with only my books. Tell me, uh, what are you doing down here in uh, in Mexico right now? And uh, 
Well, and, uh, wait, and, and and tell me about your friends that are with you. Well, my buddies and I are are about the only ones that come are left to come to Mexico every winter. Uh, we used to there used to be lots of gringos travel around Mexico with hang gliders in the old days. And uh, it seems like it's been reduced to David and David and me. And <laughs> we bring our hang gliders and our trikes down and spend a couple months in the winter. Uh, they're kind of on vacation, although I'm a flight instructor and uh, I'm still I'm still teaching people to fly. I have a student just left. Uh, he was here and for a week and then I have another student arriving in a, in a couple of days. And I will have three or four students come down here. We have a fabulous, fabulous place to learn to fly. Because it's like, imagine having a runway uh, five kilometers long in a nice constant breeze. Well, you can do lots of takeoffs and landings in five kilometers. Uh, we call them crow hops. You'll land and roll along for a minute and then take off again, and then land and roll along for a moment and then take off again. So you get a lot of landing practice in a very short period of time. It's terrific. Terrific. Very good, John. Nice talking to you today. Okay, Jorge, thank you so much.